So by now you probably heard of one of these things. It's an Elgato stream deck. Everyone wants one. Your favorite streamer probably has one and chances are you probably want one too. It's essentially just a macro keypad with LED screens under each button and you can program each button to do whatever you want. Things like changing scenes in OBS or toggling sources on and off or muting your microphone. You can even put your own icons under each button and animated GIFs. These things are incredibly useful. I use them all the time in my stream and it just makes streaming so much more enjoyable and so much more fun and so much easier. All right, cool, let's just go buy one then. And holy balls, these things are so expensive. $100 for six buttons? $250 for 32 buttons. I can't afford any of that. Who am I, Oprah? But as it turns out, most of you guys probably have one of these things. Yeah, it's called a phone. Yes, you don't have to comment. I know this phone is like as big as my face. You don't have to say anything. So over the past month or so, I've been testing out five apps that are supposed to replicate the experience of using a stream deck. And today I just want to talk about my experiences, tell you guys what I think, and if any of these five apps are viable alternatives. Now you can use these apps as a complete replacement for a stream deck or just to hold you over until your stream's making you enough money so you can go out and buy your own. But some of you might already own a stream deck and if you own one, I still highly recommend that you stick around. One, because I worked really hard in this video and I really hope that people watch it. And two, you might actually find that one of these apps can work as a perfect supplement to your existing stream deck. Like, I don't know, maybe the 15 buttons on your stream deck aren't enough and you just want to have an extra set of toggles there right by your side. But before we get into it, if you guys like these sorts of videos and you guys want some ideas or inspiration for setting up your own streams, make sure to subscribe. We make all sorts of videos to help your stream look fun and engaging and really just make the most out of your Twitch stream. So let's start off easy. I had to do it. You guessed it. It's the official Stream Deck mobile app. It was made by Elgato, so you know I had to include it on this list. It only works for iPhone, so there's no Android version at least right now. But if you're one of those gross iPhone people, well, yeah, you're in luck. The official Stream Deck mobile app is... Well, it is it is a Stream Deck. It works with the exact same software as the Stream Deck. It has the exact same 15 buttons that the original Stream Deck had. And it's super simple to set up. You just download the app. It's gonna ask you to scan a QR code. Then you install the desktop client on your computer, open it up and then add an iPhone. And then from there you scan the QR code. And then if you have a profile set up, it's gonna ask if you wanna import it. And then boom, you're all done ready to go. So because it is a stream deck, you get exactly the same functionality as you would on a real stream deck. The only difference is it's wireless and it's, uh, well, it's on your phone. So you can add commands for toggling your camera on and off, changing scenes, even pressing a button so it tweets out when you're live. And like the real physical stream deck, when you press a button, like say you hit the recording button, it gets a nice little animated logo that shows up that shows that it's recording. It even works with the Elgato key light, but again, you're gonna need that Steve Ballmer money if you wanna get those lights. And because it's on your phone, you get the inherent advantage that it's wireless, so you can go to the other side of your room and control your stream from there. Or just leave it on your desk if you're OCD and you hate cable clutter like me. What's also great is if you already own a physical stream deck, the mobile app works flawlessly with it and they actually work together as two independent stream decks. So now all of a sudden your 15 button stream deck becomes a 30 button stream deck. The other thing that this means is if you want to step up your game and eventually get a physical stream deck, you can get the mobile app, set up all of your buttons, then when you get your physical stream deck in, all of your buttons are already going to be set up and it's just going to be plug in, go, you're ready to go, don't have to set anything else up. So if that's you, you want to get a physical stream deck eventually, migrating your settings between the two could not be any simpler. Now the app does cost $3 a month or $25 a year, which don't get me wrong, that is a really great price. You can use the app for like six years before you reach the price of the regular stream deck. But me personally, I really hate subscription fees and out of all the apps in this list, this is still the most expensive one. If there's one criticism I have, it's that Elgato should really consider adding more features to the app. Like it's a touch screen. You can put whatever interface you want. You don't have to have just 15 buttons there. What about like a slider for like volume if you want to adjust your volume or like adding in a text input option for like changing the title of your stream or the game that you're playing but i totally get what elgato is doing they want to give you a taste of what the stream deck can do so that you feel compelled to buy the 150 dollars version because you enjoy it so much so i get the business strategy but just me personally as a user of the stream deck i just think there's so much more potential for an app that elgato hasn't tapped into yet all right you android people bored yet because this next one does work with your phones this one is called Streamlabs OBS Remote, and it's made by, you guessed it, Streamlabs. So it's only going to work with Streamlabs OBS, so if you use OBS Studio or OBS.Live, you can just skip this one. I'm sure a bunch of you already skipped two out of the five options, so uh, it's 
looking great so far. This one is without question by far the easiest to set up and it's completely free and ad free. When you download the app, it's gonna ask you to scan a QR code. So you just go to the settings in Streamlabs OBS, scan the QR code, and then you're done. That's all you need to do. You don't have to set up any buttons or any settings. It's all done for you. And the interface is super smooth as well. It's just a scrolling list of buttons where all the buttons are pre-generated for you. There are buttons for recording, for streaming, for muting your mic, changing scenes, for toggling sources on and off. All the basic functions that you need are right there. When you tap on one of the buttons to change scenes, all the buttons on the page change dynamically to show all the sources for that scene. So when I tap a game scene, the game scene sources appear. When I tap my camera scene, all the camera sources appear. It's super, super simple. And unlike the Stream Deck app, you can actually use a slider to change the volume of your mic. You just hold down on the button and then a slider will appear and then you just slide it and then, hey, changes. It's pretty sweet. Other than that, there's really not much else to talk about. You can't change anything on this. There's no settings. You can't add or remove buttons. You can't change buttons. You can't put pictures on any of the icons. What you get is what you get. And you can forget about all those extra features that the Stream Deck has. So you can't change your stream title, you can't set a stream marker, you can't press a button to create a clip instantly. And forget about multi-action events because that's not happening on this. But uh, hey, the app's free, so what it does, it does really well. All right, so the next app on the list is the first unofficial app. It's not made by Elgato, it's not made by Streamlabs. It's just made by some dude. I don't know who was made by, it's not important. Made by some cool dude, that's all you need to know. Okay, so I'm a dumbass and I didn't say what the app's name is called, but it's called Deckboard. This one works for OBS Studio and Streamlabs, so that's pretty nice. And it's only available for Android. So, sorry iPhone people. I'm not sorry. So like the Stream Deck app, it requires its own companion software on your desktop, but it also requires the OBS WebSocket plugin so it can communicate with OBS. If you guys aren't familiar with installing plugins, it's super simple, but go watch last week's video, it talks all about plugins and how to install them in, yeah. Go do that. So there are actually two versions of this app. There's a paid version and there's a free version that has ads. The free version only supports up to a four by three grid. So you'll only get 12 buttons as opposed to the regular stream deck, which has 15 buttons. But this is actually not that bad at all. And I'll explain why. You see Deckboard invented this thing that's really cool. You can swipe between pages. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's a really, really big deal. It just makes navigation so, so much more simple. You see on a regular stream deck, if you wanna have pages, you have to create buttons and that button takes up a button on your stream deck. So what that means is if you wanna have a forward and back page set up, you're gonna have one button dedicated for going back a page and one for going forward a page. So now your 15 button stream deck becomes a 13 button stream deck. So it's really not that big of a difference. But if you got those dollar dollar bills, you can pay $5 to get the full version and that'll give you up to 30 buttons, which is almost as much as the Stream Deck XL, which has whatever eight times four buttons is. So I'm no scientist, but I believe that's what we call an insane value. Also like the Stream Deck, Deckboard has Twitch, Twitter, and Spotify integration. Actually, I don't even know, does the Stream Deck support Spotify? I totally don't even know. Let me look that up. It doesn't look like it does. So yeah, this does one thing that the Stream Deck can do. Okay, I totally lied. It does have Spotify integration, but you have to install like a plugin for it. But you get the point. So you can push a button to send out a tweet or send a Twitch message or change songs in Spotify, but the integration just isn't quite as deep as the real Stream Deck. So you're gonna miss out on some features like being able to create clips or create stream markers or change stream titles. But for things like enabling emote only mode, yeah, you can do that. And obviously you can do the basic functions like change scenes, toggle sources. You can even put your own images behind each icon, including adding animated GIFs. Kind of like this screaming Konami chittery gift that I made. But all in all, this app actually has way more features than I thought it would have. The app even has some customization features so you can change the background colors for each deck or change the color of each button and add a border and even adding text to buttons. Although one thing that is annoying is you can't change the font, so. There's that, but it's not a big deal. Really all of the features that Deckboard is missing I can live with, but there's one feature that it is missing that I really, really want to see added in the future. And that is that the buttons don't change their icons to reflect the state of the button. What I mean by that is when you switch scenes, normally on a stream deck, it highlights the scene that's active. Or when you toggle a source, it highlights that source to notify you that it's on. Deckboard doesn't do any of that. The buttons don't change. So if you're just looking at Deckboard, you can't tell whether a scene is active or whether a toggled source is on. It doesn't tell you. So yeah, that's a real bummer. But if, if there's any feature that I would consider a must have and needs to be fixed, 
that's the one. But overall, this app is, this far exceeded my expectations. Like for what I need this app to do, this could replace my stream deck. Like if my stream deck just exploded like right now, I could I could probably live with using deck board full time. Although I hope my stream deck doesn't explode because that would be tragic. All right, it's time to take a break for this week's sponsor. Just kidding, there is no sponsor, but I need to go use the bathroom, so one sec. All right, let's get back to it. The next app on our list is one that I've seen recommended by a lot of people, and it's called Touch Portal. Get it? Touch Portal? I'm sorry, it's like 12.30 and I'm very tired. But like Deckboard, this one also has its own companion app that you need to install on your desktop. It's also got a free version and a paid version that works for OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. But Touch Portal takes it a step further and it also works with XSplit for people that want to use XSplit for some reason. It also has an Android version and an iPhone version. So both people win this time. Feature wise, it's pretty comparable to Deckboard. So it's also got Twitter integration, it's got Twitch integration. So you can do all the same things like enable emote only mode for all the memes. And if you wanna send chat messages or send out a tweet, you can do all of that. But a couple of those features that were missing in Deckboard are actually here in Touch Portal. So you can actually create a clip at a touch of a button and you can set a stream marker. It is missing Spotify integration, but it does have basic media controls if you wanna use that. But if I'm gonna be completely and totally honest with you, that's where things start to fall apart for me. Now, while the free version doesn't have ads, it only supports up to two pages with eight buttons on each page. On top of that, you don't get the cool swipey thing that Deckboard has to swipe between pages. So you actually have to use one of those buttons to switch between each page. So all of a sudden your eight buttons become seven buttons. And if you only got two pages, that's 14 buttons total. The good version is that the paid version is $9 and it supports infinite pages with up to 105 buttons per page. That's like three Stream Deck XLs in one page. So 105 buttons sounds like insane, but what I think this would be really good for is if you had a tablet and you just wanna have one page with an insane number of buttons, yeah, this could work really well. And this is probably the setup that I would recommend. I really would avoid using pages at all costs because setting up pages is a pain in the ass. Bruh. Let me explain why. You see on a stream deck, when you create a folder and then you go into that folder, it automatically creates a back button for you so you can jump back out of that folder. And then on deck board, if you just swipe across to a different page, you can just swipe back. But in touch portal, when you make a folder and you jump in that folder, but you don't put a button to go back, you're stuck. You have have no way of going back. I don't know why this is a thing, but it was super frustrating for me. The desktop client is also lacking a lot of the polish that the other apps have. Like just simple things, like you actually have to manually press a refresh button every time you make an update on the desktop client. How about setting a placeholder icon when you create a button? Nope. I mean, you can select from a pre-made list of icons, but none of these icons even look like they have anything to do with streaming anyway. Like, why is there a train here? Am I gonna call a train in the middle of the stream? I mean, I don't wanna sound too harsh because I know that developers probably work really hard on this app, but it almost seems as though the developers didn't think of how these buttons would even be used. And also, if you like fancy GIFs, sorry, not happening on this. So sorry, no screaming cannot make a gift for me. But look, if you can get around all these problems and you can set up all your buttons, it works just as well as all the other options we've looked at. There's no delay when you press a button. So when you toggle a source, it toggles instantly. When you change a scene, changes instantly. But yeah, it's just a pain to set up all the buttons initially. Overall, Touch Portal is not bad. And if you use XSplit or you just want to use a tablet with like a million buttons on it, then there's no option on this list that's going to do a better job than this. Also, if you care about those extra features like creating clips or stream markers, you got to go with Touch Portal because Deckboard doesn't have him. Remember that time I said we're going to be reviewing five apps? I lied to you. We're going to be using one of these. A keyboard or one of these. A numpad. Look, I know some of you would probably want to use something more permanent like a number pad that has physical tactile buttons. So I just wanted to remind people that, yeah, using one of these is totally viable. It's actually something that I did for like two years before the Stream Deck even came out. But to use this, we're gonna need extra software called HID Macros. And the reason why we need extra software is because our computer needs to recognize the difference between a one on this keyboard and a one on this keyboard. Also because I just really want to show off my keyboards. 
Now, when you download HID macros, you might get an error when you open it up, but if you do just go to properties, go down to compatibility mode and change it to Windows XP Service Pack 2. After that, you can just go to the macros tab and start adding macros for each key on your keyboard. You just gotta give it a name, click the scan button, and then press the key that you wanna configure on your macro pad. Under action, you can configure what you want that key to do. So you can have it press a key combination or run a program on your computer. Now, personally, what I like to do is I like to go to the scripted tab and put in this script. What this script does is it binds your macro key to the F13 key on your keyboard. Yes, the F13 key actually exists and actually you can bind keys all the way up to F24. So if you want to guarantee that your keys won't conflict with any other existing keys on your keyboard, put in F13 to F24. Then after that you can just go into OBS, go into settings, then go into hotkeys and use your new macro key to do whatever you want. Now admittedly this isn't the most elegant solution and you're not going to be able to do that much with it but there's just something nice about having extra keys available right by your side without having to pull up your phone to use it. And then also if you're extra bothered I guess you can cut out pieces of paper and then like glue them to each of the keys. That's actually what I did for a few years, but they're not on my keys anymore because I peeled them off. So there you go, five Stream Deck alternatives that you can try today. Honestly, that was a really fun experiment. I came into this expecting maybe I'd find one or two viable alternatives and then the rest are garbage. But no, literally all five of these options had their merits. If you eventually plan to get a physical Stream Deck and you have an iPhone, then yeah, go with the official Stream Deck mobile app. And then once you get your physical Stream Deck, it's just plugs right in, all your settings are there, don't have to do any setup. If you want something that will work in literally like five minutes from right now, then yeah, go with Streamlabs OBS remote. If you want something that's close-ish to the Stream Deck experience, but you wanna use like a million buttons, you gotta go with Touch Portal. You wanna use something physical, bam pull out one of these. See, it's another one of my keyboards that I said I'd be showing off. But out of all of these, which is the one that I recommend to most people? It's gotta be Deckboard and it's not even close. Now I know that might come as a bit of a surprise because the official Stream Deck app exists, but if you're just a baby streamer, I don't recommend that you spend money on things like a Stream Deck. Just save up your money, get things like lights, get things like cameras, get things like microphones. That's what you should be investing your money in. If you wanna pay a subscription fee for the Stream Deck app, by all means, go for it. But I just think that Deckboard can do like 80% of what a Stream Deck can do and it's really really easy to use and all of the main features at least that I use totally works in Deckboard. In fact, I have a Stream Deck and I still use Deckboard. Like I have my Stream Deck right here and then I would have my Deckboard right next to it. But you guys let me know what your favorite is. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which Stream Deck alternative that you use. It could be one of the five I looked at. Could be one that I didn't look at. There's other ones on the App Store that I didn't even cover. Also, if you want to continue discussion about streaming, Join the Discord, link down below. You can show your stream setups, your stream layouts, or if you have a deck board or a stream deck, show us your button layout. I'd love to see what you guys got. And if you want to see my stream deck or deck board in action, come join my streams. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. I usually stream at nighttime, which is probably morning where you live if you live in America, because I live in Australia. And if you want to know how I got this accent, you're going to have to come to my stream to find out. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.